Hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in our last couple of videos, we saw how to build a linear regression model inside of Python and that was kind of kicking off our series into machine learning with Python. Now we're going to be building other models using Python, but unfortunately to build these models, we need data uh, to feed into them. So that's something that's very important to machine learning or just you know, kind of the deep learning, machine learning categories in general is that we need a bunch of data to feed into our models. Um, so that way we can actually train them and help them understand kind of the patterns behind the data. So we have to get access to this data. Now, some data is easier to find than other types of data. Most of the analysis that we're going to be doing is going to be related to financials that uh, come from a company just because getting financial data for companies is very, very easy. Uh, the reason why is that if you're a public company, you are regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And every quarter when you release earnings, you have to submit your financial documents to the SEC. And then those documents are made publicly available for free. So that means as a user, if you so choose, you could go on the SEC right now and you could actually download different financial documents for a public company. And inside these financial documents, there's all sorts of information related to the performance of the company, how they did that quarter. Um, and in some financial documents like the 10K, we actually get a lot of text that explains kind of the risk that we see with that particular business, what they think going forward. And it actually gives us a nice mechanism where if we ever want to, we can do a good sentiment analysis and we can kind of recognize how the sentiment is changing year over year. And so there's just a ton of good information that is free and easily available, but we have to actually go and get it from the SEC. Now the SEC does have some documentation about how to use their systems. However, it's not the most detailed and you kind of have to play around a little bit. And more importantly, you have to know what you're looking for. And so if you go to the SEC website, there's a couple different tabs, I guess, or links that you can click um, that basically tell you how to access their systems and um, how to do simple searches on their system. Um, and so the name of their system that we're going to be using to um, retrieve information is called Edgar. And then in the next tab, I'll show you what that actually stands for because I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, Edgar, Edgar is, is their like database. And so this is where they submit all the financial documents that any company releases and then it's structured in a certain way where we can actually go and get information about a particular company. Now there's different ways we can get information. One way is we can use a central index key. So that's right down here. And then this is how we could just do a general purpose search. And so if we had a company's central index key, we can actually go and get all the financial documents about that particular company. And there's some other types of searches that we can do as well that are related to certain industry codes. Um, and then we can also search for certain financial documents with given a certain time frame. So they, they make it you know relatively easy to search for the documents, but you kind of have to go about it at your own pace in the sense of you're going to have to just play around in order to find out uh, you know where the documents live and which documents do you need and, and really from when. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of doing a more general purpose search, but then they also lay out some different things where if you want to do a very specific search, there is a way to do that as well. Now, in this particular series, um, we're going to start out just searching for one company. Um, we're going to just see how to retrieve all the financial documents for that company. And then we'll move on to how do we get all the central index keys for a particular quarter um, you know, basically who were the companies that submitted those financial documents for that quarter. And once we have those keys, how do we go about and get the documents related to those companies? And then I'll also in some later series, we'll explore how to parse a 10K. We'll see how to download basically aggregated data that the SEC has already aggregated for us. So that way we don't have to do a lot of parsing, but uh, we just have to keep in mind it might not give us every piece of information that we might necessarily want. So that's basically doing a basic search. And then they have this other tab, which is uh, sec.gov, Edgar, search Edgar, and then accessing Edgar data. Htm. And then this is basically what I would call the documentation behind the Edgar system. And they, and they really tell us, you know, how do you go and get the information that you need? 
um, and where does it live? And so really at the highest level, we can just do a very broad category search and we say, hey, what were the daily submissions for any given quarter? And it will return a bunch of files back to us that we can then download or parse and get certain information from it. Um, so this is kind of the broad search. And then again, I'll do a series on this one. We have a feed search, uh, old loads, things along that nature. And then they also have a paths and directory structure. And so this is really kind of what we're going to be covering today. But basically what we're going to see is that if we go to this little link right here, everything has a CIK number. So this is the kind of the unique company ID. And then for a given uh, I, uh, given company number, they have different submissions. And then those submissions can have documents that belong to those submissions. And so I kind of have an example up already. No, it's not that one. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, what we're going to do is we're going to search for this particular company. Now, this is the company that is for Goldman Sachs. And then this is telling us all the submissions that were made um, at these given times. Now, you have to keep in mind that sometimes you can have a ton of submissions for a given company. So you can see that this one is obviously going to go down very, very, very far. So some companies have more submissions than other ones. So we just have to keep in mind that if you're searching for it, you can all often get a lot of data back to you. But for any given submission, if we go in here, you will find all the documents that were submitted for that particular submission. And then these individual documents contain different pieces of information. And so if we want, we could go and get all the, you know, the, the HTML code for this particular document. So it's there, but the question is, you have to really know what you're looking for and where it's at. Because if you don't know what you're looking for, you can get a bunch of information back, but it is available if we want it. So they're not making it locked away where we have to pay for it. This is all readily available, but they're not necessarily gonna you know, guide you to where the data is. You sometimes have to do a little bit of searching on your own. Um, but there is some structure behind it where we can easily, um, you know, kind of do this hierarchy where we go to a company, we go to a submission, and then we go to the files for that particular submission. Um, and then also I put some information here where they also do kind of educate you of what the different forms are um, and, and really how can we kind of filter it out so that way we just get back the pieces of information that we want. Um, and then there's kind of a high level search where if we wanted to do by a particular year, I could go back to 1994 if I wanted to, I could go to quarter three, and then I can get all the submissions that were done um, at a particular given time or, or point in time. So uh, again, lots of information, it's, it's free. We just have to parse it ourselves if we want it to kind of be anything really meaningful at the end of the day. So. But it's nice. I, I think it's sometimes better than, than paying for certain information because especially if we want long-term historical data, usually once you go past five years from any given date, um, sometimes it, it's hard to find that information or if it is available, uh, sometimes you have to pay. So it really kind of just depends what you're trying to do. But with that being said, I've talked enough. Let's actually go through and make these requests. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to define our base URL. So this is basically the URL where all the data lives. Um, and so what we do is we'll just create a variable called base URL. I want a raw string, so I'm going to do R uh, brackets, not brackets, quotation marks. Um, and then really what I'm just going to do is I'm going to copy it. <laughs> that way I don't have to type it again. And then it's going to be that. And I'm going to put this right here. And so all it is, is it's sec.gov, capital A for archives, Edgar, and then data. And then it's HTTPS. And once we have that, we just need to define a CIK number to do a company search. And again, I'm not going to explain in this video how to search for all these CIK numbers, but they do exist. Um, in this example, we're going to search for Goldman Sachs. So just so you guys know, keep in mind, sometimes multiple companies can have multiple CIK numbers, depending on if it's a subsidy or something along that nature. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind. And then some companies can be named the same, but it could be LLC or something else. So you just have to make sure that you're using the right um, CIK number. And then I just want it in this format because ideally what I'm going to do is I'm going to start merging these two different strings into a URL that I can easily work with. And so uh, there might be a better way to do this, but for right now, let's just kind of keep it simple so that way we can do the search. Okay, so once we have a CIK number, so this is the unique identifier, sorry, unique identifier for Goldman Sachs, now we can basically define a filings URL. And so um, what we want to do is I'm really trying to create uh, th basically this URL. So I want to get the URL that will return all of the filings for a given company. So that, that's really all I'm doing. So let's create a filing URL. That, that's just kind of how I like to think about it is I go, okay, filing URL, and then a particular filing will go into the documents URL, and then we'll go into an individual document. So I like to think of it as like a hierarchy. And so this one, we'll store it in a uh, new uh, variable, we'll call it filings URL, and then we'll combine our base URL uh, plus our CIK number, and then plus our little string that's just gonna be uh, index, and then .json. So <clears throat> I do wanna explain this right here for a second. Right now we're seeing the HTML version, but if you actually just put index.json at the end of it, it will return back a JSON structure, which is just easier to parse. I rather not parse the HTML because then I'm gonna have to use beautiful soup. Um, we'll find that we have to use beautiful soup if we wanna actually parse the 10Ks and stuff like this. Um, but just to get the filings and the paths, let's just work with JSON, it's just easier. Um, and then I also believe we can do XML if we want as well. So we can actually use XML. And then again, the default is HTML. I have to remember though if this is, yeah. So it's just index and then it's basically the return type that you want. So you have JSON, XML, and then you have HTML. Now in our examples, we're just gonna keep it simple and do JSON and then actually Technically, you don't need any of that at the end, but if you don't have it at the end, it just returns back the HTML version. So you just have to you know, keep that in mind. Again, we want the JSON version. So let's get the information. So let's request the URL, uh, and then we'll store all the information that is sent back to us in a variable called content. We will call the request library, and we'll call the get method, and then we'll do the filings URL. So hopefully this looks very familiar if you've seen my series on Beautiful Soup or just working with APIs. Nothing here should kind of uh, kind of jump out as anything you know unfamiliar. Um, and then I want to decode uh, uh, my content just because right now it's going to come back to us as like a byte stream. Um, and then we're going to want to convert that into a JSON structure. So a JSON structure will. Um, basically turn it into a Python dictionary, which is just easier to navigate. And so we'll call the content variable, and then we'll call the JSON method. And then <clears throat> if I print out this information, I should just see um, some JSON information. And it looks like it's working great. And so we get back a directory with a list of items, and then each item has uh, a last modified parameter, a name, a type, and then a size if it's relevant. Um, in this situation, uh, we don't get a size back, but we do get a type um, and then a name. And really what we're concerned with in this particular situation is we really want a name. Um, uh, just because with the name, we can build the second part of our URL, which is basically that particular filing. So the name is referencing a particular filing for that company. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable called filing number. And so in this section, we're gonna go and grab a single filing number. And so we'll store it in a variable. Again, I'll go into my decoded content because at this point, now I have a dictionary object, which is very easy to work with. I'm gonna go into the directory 
directory key, and then I'm gonna go into the item key. The item key is gonna return back a list, which I can slice. I want the first element from that list, and then the first element from that list is gonna be another dictionary, and then I want from that first dictionary the value that is associated with the name key. And so if I print out my filing number, I see that I now have a single filing number that I can now use to build the second part of my URL. And with this, let's define our filing number URL. It's not identical to up here, but it's, it's pretty close. So I'm gonna copy this just to save some time. I'm gonna uh, create this and just make it a single filing URL because what I'm trying to do is create this structure where I'm saying this is for all the URLs, this is for a single URL, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass through um, the filing number, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just add that component to it. So uh, keep in mind, because I structured the CIK number like that, it already has a slash at the end, so I don't have to define a slash here. I can just pass through my filing number, and then I can also um, do my index.json. Again, it is valid if you wanted to. You could also go and do, um, what is it, uh, XML or things along that nature. Uh, you have to keep in mind sometimes it likes to freeze on you depending on how you know many documents you have back. But if I wanted to do JSON, this is how the structure would look. I could also do XML, and then this is how it would look as well. Uh, but I like the, the JSON structure just because that's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so we have our filing URL. Let's go and request that new URL. And so from here, uh, what we'll do is we'll just remove that, and then we'll look at the decoded content. And so again, it's the same structure. We have a directory with a list of items, and then those items have a key, last modified, a name, a type, and a size. And so uh, very easy to go and get the information. A lot of times you will see different types of documents with different types of filings. Sometimes with, for example, 10Ks, they have images that go along with it, uh, things along that nature. So sometimes, for example, you might want to filter out and say, hey, I don't need every single um, item. I just need the ones that are the HTML uh, documents, for example, or something along that nature. So here we'll just get the document names. And so what I'll do is I'll say for documents in uh, document, uh, I guess I'll change it. I'll change this to document content. And what I'll do is I'll say inside my document content, so all of it, go into the directory key and then go into the item key. I'm fine here and then we're gonna loop through each element in this list and I'm gonna ask a simple question. If the document type uh, does not equal uh, image dot, well image two dot gif, then you can print uh, the document name. So in other words, I just want to see the ones that have that are not an image. And then we'll say print. And then I'll just put that in. And so now we get back all the ones that are only the HTML ones for this particular filing. Now, um, you know, if, if we wanted to, what I could show you next, um, this is kind of for a later video, but we could actually construct our, uh, our document URL. And so this is, again, very similar to what we were doing right up here. Um, I'm just gonna copy this. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a forward slash, um, and then I'll create a new variable, call it doc name, and it equals that. And then I'll say, hey, put the document name. 
And from here, I will print out the document URL. And then what you will find is that these are valid links and that they will lead you to the particular document that you can then parse if you want. Some of these documents come in HTML, some come in XML. Um, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of exploring. I tend to go with the ones that are HTML because then they have subsequent documents that you can access as well. Um, for example, you could get the full text file. You gotta be a little bit careful though because some of these files are very, very large and they will freeze your browser if you're not careful. So just be a little careful when you start opening a bunch of files, um, especially if you don't know what's inside of them. Try to check the size um, before you do anything like that. Um, and then, like I said, uh, so, you know, like the text file, um, you could do the HTML, you know, lots of good information here. And again, it's all free. So um, at this point, we would have to parse the information if we wanted to get anything meaningful out of it. But uh, this is basically how we get to this point where, okay, you went to a particular filing, you now got all the documents. Um, and then what we could do is we could parse those documents. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to kind of expand on this idea of looping through the filings. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna see how we can get all the particular filings for a given company. Um, and then we're gonna also see, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, how we can get um, all the particular documents for that particular um, you know, filings and stuff like that. So in other words, say you wanted to get multiple filings, how would you go and uh, do that? And so what I'll do is I'm gonna insert a cell below um, just because most of this is pretty identical, uh, at least up until a certain point. So here I can copy this. I don't need the libraries, but I can copy this. And then I have to check my notes really quickly because I can't remember which ones I have to go next. Oh, okay. So that was actually all it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to change it a little bit. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll get multiple filings. So we'll say for, for filing in decoded content. So get multiple filings. Uh, we'll just go here because remember this is just a directory of all the filings so all we're doing is we're going to loop through that particular directory we're going to define a new variable that will equal my filing dot name and just to show that we'll, we'll print uh, number and i just realized i misspelled that obviously because why would i spell it correctly so now we have all the filings, and if you start scrolling, you will realize very quickly, again, for certain companies, <laughs> there's a ton. Uh, in this case, uh, Goldman has a ton of filings, and so you could get back a ton of information if you wanted. Uh, but we don't need to do that. This is more just for demonstration purposes. So uh, define each filing number. And what I'm going to do from here is we can basically take this little guy right here because it's pretty much identical. Um, we just have to change some stuff. Uh, we'll change this to num instead of number. And then from here, what we would do is we would request this URL, but we're going to do it um, again, multiple times. Keep in mind, try to be a little respectful when you start going on the SEC. If you're going to do a bulk poll, um, you might not want to do uh, a ton of requests all at once unless it's kind of coming from like the same page or something like that. But if you're going across multiple pages, um, you know, just keep in mind and how much you're requesting. You might want to put some pause breaks in there just to kind of give the server some time and, and things like that. Most of the time it can handle it, but I like to kind of throw that out there. Um, and then once we get back that information of that particular filing, what we do is we want the documents for that particular filing. And so again, it's it's almost identical at this point. It's really just kind of um, taking this information. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful though because we will get 
a lot back. And then what we'll do is we'll tab it in. But all we really did is we're just looping through the directories that were sent back to us. That's, that's really all we're doing is we're just looping through the directories. At the highest level, we have to make another request. Um, and then once we have that, we could get a list of all the document IDs that come back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this just to show you that if you want, you can get all of the URLs as well. And I just have to make sure I didn't misspell anything. I mean, I guess I can just run it. Um, so again, you can tell we're getting back a ton of information, just an astronomical amount. And then trying to parse all this would be a pain. <laughs> My God, it would be a pain. Um, but I, I think it does kind of warrant that this is just telling you, you know, this information's out there. You don't necessarily have to pay for it. Um, at least with public companies. And if you're not going back, you know, like 40 years, uh, it's pretty much all there. You just have to know what you're looking for. Um, and you just have to know kind of what is getting sent back to you. Um, and then again, if you start going through all of some of this, what is it? Oh, I know what I did wrong. I didn't change that. So I got to stop that. These aren't valid URLs because it's basically telling us it's all the same. Um, what is it? It's all the same filing number that's up above. Um, we don't want that. We want the ones that we are in the loop. So my apologies about that. Okay, so this looks better. So these are at least changing. That's always a good step. Um, perfect. So now, now it's working. My apologies. All I did is I, I changed this from filing number to filing num. The reason I had to change it is up here, this was the old filing number, and so it was referencing the old one. I want it to reference the one that was in the loop, that's all. Um, but once you've done that, you can see um, there's a lot of good information if you want it. Um, th some of them, they even give you charts. I mean, it, it's pretty interesting once you start kind of digging into it to, to see uh, you know, what's out there. Um, but with that being said, I am going to finish out the video just because I think this is enough to at least get us introduced to the concept of, you know, searching for a particular company. What we'll do next in the uh, next couple of videos is we'll see a, okay, let's assume we don't want just one company. How do we go get all the companies for a particular filing? Right? So we'll see that with these high level directories with these guys right here, if I go back to the parent one, um, they break it out by year. And then they break it out by quarter. So um, each one of these files, uh, I don't want to download it. I think I have a copy in my, in my folder. Yeah, here it is. You will find that with each one of these little uh, files in here, what you get is some, you know, some interesting stuff to say the least. Uh, if you open it in a notepad, you basically get a list of companies, uh, the form type, the CIK number, the date it was submitted, and then the link to that particular document. So this will become really useful if we just want a particular document for a given company across multiple years. We can easily filter it to where we just want the 8Ks, for example, or we just want the, um, you know, the 10Ks, or we want certain ones that are related to, you know, board governmentship or things along that nature. So this is how we would do that. This is how we would go and get certain documents that um, we don't want to necessarily return everything. We just want the 10Ks, for example. So that's kind of in the next video. And then after that video, we'll explore how to actually parse certain documents. Now, I can't go through all of them because I would be here all day. And then for the most part, we're not gonna actually need every single document. We just need a couple when it comes to certain financial metrics and things along that nature. But obviously, if you have any questions about what I kind of covered today, please put them down in the comments below. I know for some people, this is kind of new to them. Uh, hopefully you finance people out there, you find this useful. If some of you guys already knew that, that is awesome. I didn't realize this stuff was here until like, you know, a few months ago. Um, but, you know, if you kind of have your little insights to make things easier for other people, you know, I please, I encourage you share it by all means, because I'm not going to say I'm an expert at navigating the SEC website. Um, 
I have some friends who work, you know, in finance, investment banking, all that kind of stuff. So they might know this more than I do, but hopefully this will be useful for some of you finance people out there or, you know, people just, you know, generally in, interested in finance and machine learning. I think this is a great place to kind of get all of that data. So yeah, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below. And then also, if you could, uh, please make sure to like the video. Uh, we always appreciate the support. And then also, if you're not already, uh, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release uh, new videos on new topics. So thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.